In the previous episode, we saw the mathematicians of Europe rebelling against working with mathematics based on the Creator's creation. They set about making a basis on the constructs of their own minds. But along with some other notable mathematicians, an Oxford don called Charles Dodgson, being a Christian, was perfectly happy with mathematics dealing with the creation. He did research in aspects of reality, like statistics and solution of systems of equations, which have been valuable to me and many others in our work and in our research. He also loved telling stories to children. He liked to warn them about how silly adults can be. He wrote a very well-known story called Alice's Adventures in Wonderland under the assumed name of Lewis Carroll. Later, he wrote another story which warned about adult foolishness, the new mathematics. It was called Through the Looking Glass. Presumably the point of the title is that in this world behind the mirror everything is the wrong way round and backwards. One of the characters is an absent-minded professor type, the White Queen. She tells Alice something which couldn't be true, to which Alice responds, One can't believe impossible things. I dare say you haven't had much practice, said the Queen. Why, sometimes I've believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. Anybody getting involved in mathematics like that of relativity and the Big Bang will have to believe far more impossible things than that. Another wrong way round and backwards character is a domineering know-it-all professor, the Red Queen, who makes a glib remark about a hill being a valley. To which Alice replies, A hill can't be a valley, you know. That would be nonsense. The Queen replies, You may call it nonsense if you like, but I've heard nonsense compared to which that would be as sensible as a dictionary. And that reminds me of Albert Einstein's claim, There is no more commonplace statement than that the world we live in is a four-dimensional space-time continuum. I can almost hear Alice asking, Oh, really? And what are those four dimensions that you say we live in? Why, obviously, length, breadth, height, and imaginary time multiplied by the speed of light. Oh, and what is imaginary time multiplied by the speed of light? It's a construct of mathematician Minkowski's mind and therefore perfectly valid as a basis for mathematics. Einstein decided it was valid for his theory of relativity. Herbert Dingle was a professor of physics at London University. He wrote books on relativity. Then he discovered a very simple proof that relativity cannot be valid. The scientific journals wouldn't publish it. He confronted the well-known relativity experts, and they couldn't disprove it. After years of trying to get the proof published, he wrote a book, Science at the Crossroads, in which he gave his proof, and he also wrote, In the language of mathematics, one can tell lies as well as truth, and it can be very difficult to tell one from the other. He also noted that, Scientists have relapsed into imagining how nature ought to behave and then assuming that she does so. The factor which has made this possible is the exchange of reason for mathematics. Mathematics has become the master of science instead of its servant. Another world-class scientist, Nobel Prize winner Frederick Soddy, was also very unhappy with this situation. In an address to Nobel Prize winners, he said, Whilst there is no objection urged against mathematicians doing whatever seems good to them, in their own sphere, quite definitely they should be stopped 
from presenting their whims as science, let alone pretending that in the last analysis they are the real scientists. Pointing particularly to relativity, he said, it has been made the occasion for an orgy of amateurish metaphysics, all tending to represent the mathematician, a mere calculator apart from experimental knowledge, into a heaven-sent magician able to make length and time physically equivalent. We can see some of that orgy of amateurish metaphysics on NASA's website. There's a course on the Big Bang universe. It tells us that region of space that is within our present horizon was indeed no bigger than a point in the past. Nevertheless, if all of space, both inside and outside our horizon, is infinite now, it was born infinite. These statements could both be true only if the area within our present horizon was both no bigger than a point and infinite at the same time. If it is closed and finite, then it was born with zero volume and grew from that. In neither case is there a centre of expansion, a point from which the universe is expanding away from. Well, if it grew from zero volume, how could it not expand away from a point? What do these contradictory statements about this make-believe universe, created by that heaven-sent magician Minkowski, actually tell us? Could it be that he couldn't fathom out which, if any, of the silly results from his maths were valid? So he assumed they were all valid. I think Alice might have agreed that in comparison to this nonsense, calling a hill a valley would be almost as sensible as a dictionary. The Big Bang course continues with, The Big Bang did not occur at a single point in space as an explosion. It is better thought of as the simultaneous appearance of space everywhere in the universe. Well, the White Queen may be happy to believe contradictions and impossibilities like that, but unless you're a devotee of the new mathematics, I suspect you, as well as Alice, would rather believe what Frederick Soddy said in his address to the Nobel Prize winners. The real liars today are the mathematicians, if you are fool enough to believe them. When people including mathematicians, rebel against God, they always become vain in their imaginations and their foolish hearts are darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they become fools. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.